It's now been a few days since Nvidia made the announcement for the RTX 50 series GPUs, and I've had some time to interact with a lot of you in the comment section on my previous video. I ran a community poll, and I've been on Twitter talking to a bunch of you as well, and we've been sharing memes back and forth, and I think I have a pretty good idea where everybody kind of lands on this announcement. I think for the most part, people always get excited when new GPUs are announced, right? I mean, GPUs are just a hot topic, but I wanna make it clear what to expect here because I'm about to compare spec for spec 40 series versus the 50 series and let you know exactly what's coming additionally I want to make sure that everybody really understands about this whole you know 50 70 equaling the 40 90 performance marketing claim because yeah that's yeah, that's not true. All right, so let's get into it. Number one, will the 5070 equal the 4090 in terms of performance? The answer is no, and we know this for many reasons. The first reason why we know this is because right after Jensen said the 5070 will rival the 4090 and match its performance for 549, he also said it would be impossible without AI. Impossible without artificial intelligence. And now some of you may be asking, well, what exactly does that mean? Well, what that means is DLSS and frame generation. And so essentially the claim is this, if you take a 5070, and if you enable DLSS and if you turn on multi frame generation, it will then rival the 4090 with the same DLSS quality preset and single frame generation. And no, single frame generation is not the official marketing term of it. It's just called frame generation. But I want to make sure there is a clear distinction here because multi frame generation is the new technology only available on the 50 series GPUs. And it is now aiming to insert multiple frames in between two rendered frames. Whereas before with single frame generation, well, you get one frame in between two rendered frames. And now I don't want to lose you. So in short, it's going to take the 5070, all this additional frame generation, all this additional AI upscaling just to match the 4090. And I wanna make sure that's abundantly clear. In fact, I found this meme online. It's absolutely hysterical because it completely encapsulates exactly this issue. On the front, yeah, the 5070 will equal the 4090, but on the back, you have DLSS, multi-frame generation, Reflex 2, and of course, you're limited to 12 gigabytes of VRAM. And that's the other thing I wanna point out here. If by some miracle, if by some miracle, the 5070, could match the 4090 and raw rasterization because of some you know architectural enhancement it would just be limited by the 12 gigabytes of vram the 4090 literally has double the amount of vram there's no way the 5070 will actually equal the 4090 in terms of performance and i just want to make sure that's abundantly clear and now a lot of people say well nvidia's lying well it really kind of comes down to their position and how they're viewing it. You see, I think in the mind of Jensen, he doesn't view this as a lie because he is counting AI as the future. He is counting inserted frames or frame generation equivalent to a normal or natural rendered frame. In his head, these two things are equal. They're the same. Even though they're coming about in different ways, he counts them equally the same. And that's where the disconnect is because gamers do not count inserted frames, AI generated frames, frame generation, gamers don't count this as the same thing as a normal rendered frame. And that is the disconnect between Nvidia as a big corporation and you and me, the little guys in the gaming community. And finally, just to hammer that point home, here is the RTX 4090 right next to the RTX 5070. And you can see that the 5070 basically loses in every single category. Significantly less CUDA cores, less tensor cores, less ray tracing cores, slower clock speeds, even if it's only by a little bit, a worse memory interface bus width. Pretty much the only thing the 5070 has going for it is the fact that it is a significantly cheaper card and the TGP is lower, which means you can use a lower wattage power supply. That's about it. There is no way the 5070 will match the 4090 in performance. And I'm just trying to make sure I'm making this abundantly clear. And I think I have accomplished that. So we know the 5070 will not match the 4090. Now with that out the way, let's move on and actually start comparing the 40 series GPUs to the 50 series GPUs. Let's see where we're actually getting a bump in a specification like a physical increase in something versus things that might have gotten worse or stayed the same and everything i'm showing you will be organized together in a big chart that i have a picture of in my patreon only discord shout out to my patreon members thank you for your continued support and if you would like to be part of that discord the link will be in the pinned comment below okay first up is the 5090 versus the 4090 and basically if the color is green that is a good sign that means we are getting an improvement in that category 
category. If the color is red, we are falling behind in that category. And if the color is white, that means there is no change from the previous generation. And so you can see for the CUDA core count, the 5090 has 21,760 CUDA cores compared to the 4090's 16,384 CUDA cores. So that's definitely a sizable upgrade there. And for our tensor cores, we have a new generation of tensor cores. And this is bringing us an increase in what NVIDIA is referring to as AI tops. We have 3,352 compared to the 4090's 1,321. And next up for our ray tracing cores, once again, it is a new generation and we now have 318 teraflops versus the 4090's 191 teraflops. And our clock speed is a decrease in both our base clock and our boost clock. The 4090 is still clocking faster. And for our memory configuration, we now have 32 gigabytes compared to the 4090's 24 gigabytes. And it is now faster memory with GDDR7 versus the previous GDDR6X. And the memory interface bus width is also increasing to 512 bit versus the previous 384 bit. And where we lose is in the categories of power and money. The 5090's TGP is now 575 watts as compared to the 4090's 450 watts. You are now required to have a 1000 watt power supply as opposed to an 850 watt power supply. And the US MSRP at launch is $2,000 as opposed to $1,600. Next up is the 5080 versus the 4080. Once again, we do see an increase in our CUDA core count, 10,752 versus 9,728. And for the sake of time, I'm not gonna read every single number going forward, but you can see all the information on the screen for you. And as you can see, we do have an increase in our tensor cores. We also have an increase in our ray tracing cores. And unlike the 5090, the 5080 actually sees an increase in both the base clock and the boost clock over the 4080. The memory configuration here is the same amount of memory coming in at 16 gigabytes. However, you still get that improvement in GDDR7 over GDDR6X. Now there's no change to the memory interface bus width. The TGP is slightly worse. And this now requires you to have a little bit beefier of a power supply. And finally, we do have that $1,000 US MSRP for the 5080, whereas the 4080 launched at that awful $1,200 US MSRP. And now if we quickly factor in the 4080 Super, you can see not too much changes in terms of the benefits for the 5080, except for that US MSRP. So instead of there being a benefit and a price decrease, it is now the exact same price of $1,000 US MSRP. But pretty much everything else that was still a benefit over the 4080 is still a benefit over the 4080 Super, although not quite as much considering how the 4080 Super does have more tensor cores and ray tracing cores and CUDA cores than the 4080. So the improvement there is not quite as large, but there is still an improvement. And now let's take a look at the 5070 Ti. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and show you both the 4070 Ti and the 4070 Ti Super. As you can see, there's not much of a difference between those two cards in compared to the benefits with the 5070 Ti. The 5070 Ti does have more CUDA cores, more ray tracing cores, and more tensor cores. However, unfortunately, once again, we do have a decrease in clock speeds for the new series of GPUs. So unfortunately, the 5070 Ti does have a lower clock speed than both the 4070 Ti and the 4070 Ti Super. However, switching over to the memory, this is where things get a little bit interesting, right? Because the 5070 Ti is definitely better in every way when compared to the 4070 Ti. You have faster VRAM and more VRAM. However, this time when compared to the 4070 Ti Super, the amount of VRAM is the same and the memory interface bus width is the same. However, the only difference is the 5070 Ti is using GDDR7, whereas the 4070 Ti Super is using GDDR6X. Now the 5070 Ti does see a TGP increase. And once again, this does mean that the recommended power supply is now a little bit bigger. However, on the flip side, the launch US MSRP is $50 cheaper than both the 4070 Ti and the 4070 Ti Super coming in at $750 as opposed to the original $800. Okay, now let's take a look at the 5070. And this is very weird because if you look at the CUDA core count and if you only compare it to the 4070, then we're getting a slight increase in CUDA cores. However, the moment you compare it to the 4070 Super, we actually lose in CUDA cores. Meanwhile, we still see an improvement in both tensor cores and ray tracing cores and both our base and boost clock speeds are higher and on the memory unfortunately there's not much of a extra benefit there it, it is still 12 gigabytes of vram however we do still get the gddr7 
as opposed to the GDDR6X. And unfortunately, there's no improvement to the memory interface bus width. It is still the same 192 bit. And we also see an increase in the TGP for the 5070. But thankfully, the power supply requirement does not change. You can still use a 650 watt power supply. And also the US MSRP is $50 cheaper when compared to the original launch price of the 4070 and the launch price of the 4070 Super. And now finally, one more thing before we get out of here. I want to take a look at the performance charts published on NVIDIA's website because in my opinion, I think they are very misleading. And I think some people are actually looking at these charts and thinking, oh wow, these cards are significantly faster. I had briefly talked about in my previous video how these charts are less than clear. And believe it or not, I got pushback from people and people said that the charts were actually very clear and how I need to learn how to read the fine print. So let's take a look at the fine print. Okay, and looking at this chart, and at first glance, it would seem the 5090 is significantly faster than the 4090. And in fact, if you look at any of the charts, the 5080, 5070 Ti, or the 5070, you see the same point conveyed over and over. The new generation is significantly faster than the old generation. However, there are many, many problems with all of these charts. If we look at the 5090 chart, and if we look at that fine print, you can see they are using DLSS performance mode. And so performance mode is the option with DLSS that will absolutely give you the highest frame rate possible, although you do have a noticeable hit to image quality. So that's already a little bit misleading right there. But in addition to that, in most of these cases, they're actually using frame generation. And you can see on the 40 series GPUs, they are using regular frame generation, which is just a single frame insertion. Whereas you can see on the 50 series GPUs, they are using multiple multi-frame generation. So that is already not an apples to apples comparison and that will absolutely not be fair to compare. And then on top of all of that, they're not even using the same CPU for all of these tests. They're using a 9800X3D for the gaming test, and they're using an Intel 14900K for the application test. And now another footnote here is that a Plague Tale Requiem only supports DLSS3. So that does mean it still has frame generation. It just doesn't have multi-frame generation. And a lot of people are pointing this out as a good thing because they seem to think, oh, it's a like for like comparison. And technically speaking, okay, sure, fine. It's a like for like comparison comparison but none of us are getting excited about the fact that you use DLSS upscaling to compare to DLSS upscaling. That is simply not what we want to know. And so then people say, oh, well, if you want something without DLSS, look at Far Cry 6, because Far Cry 6 is only ray tracing. It does not support DLSS. And so this is a native 4K resolution with ray tracing enabled. And as you can see, the 5090 is faster than the 4090. And overall, I will say, great, okay, cool, That that is is definitely a way better data point but the issue here is the scaling of the chart you have a zero a 1x and a 2x and we don't know about any of the numbers in between people on reddit have taken it up on themselves to try and figure out the exact percentage and most people are landing somewhere around 30 percent give or take and by the looks of it that looks correct but we're not gonna know for sure until the official review day gets here. And finally, one other thing I wanna point out is that if you look at the 5070 Ti and the 5070 benchmarks, you can see they're actually using DLSS quality instead of performance. And so unfortunately, that means the testing parameters are not the same for all of these GPUs. And so you are constantly having to look at the footnotes to figure out exactly what was done on that chart. There's no consistency here. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I hope you found value in today's video. Here are some final thoughts that I have. So unfortunately, we did see a power increase with all of the new cards across the board. Sure, it wasn't always by that much, but that number is going in the opposite direction of where we would like to see it, right? However, the good news here is that the price either stayed the same or it even went down when compared to the 40 series cards. Obviously, the exception to that is the RTX 5090, but the good news with that is that the RTX 5090 is an enthusiast level card, and so that will not impact the majority of gamers out there. Now, with all that being said, I found it very weird that some of the 50 series cards had a clock increase, whereas other ones had a clock decrease. And my final thoughts on the cards are pretty much like this. The 5070, the more I look at it, is less and less impressive. Cool, it's $549 
but it's got this stain of being compared to the 4090, which is something it can't really live up to. And also the CUDA core count is not that much greater when compared to the 4070, and it's actually less when compared to the 4070 Super, and it's still only 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So the 5070 will sell well because of the price money talks at the end of the day, Gamers want the cheapest cards possible within reason, and so the 5070 will sell well, but it's not something that I get excited about. The 5080 is also something I don't get too excited about because it's $1,000, significantly less powerful than the 5090, and it has the same memory configuration as the 5070 Ti, while only having a few more CUDA cores and costing $250 more. And so the 5070 and 5080 are my two least favorite cards this generation. The 5070 Ti, I do think is probably going to be the best value option if you plan on buying a 50 series card because you are getting the same memory configuration as a 5080 you're getting noticeably more CUDA cores than the 5070 and the price doesn't exactly break the bank sure yeah it could be a little bit cheaper but it is cheaper than both the 4070 ti and the 4070 ti launch us msrp and finally that brings me to the 5090 now the 5090 is not something that is for everybody. The majority of PC gamers do not need a 5090, will not be able to afford a 5090. It is an enthusiast level card that starts at $2,000. It'll be a beast for sure, but you don't need it for gaming and the majority of you probably won't be able to afford it. And I completely understand that because, well, it's a $2,000 card, which frankly is a bit ridiculous. Now, with that being said though, I say I get excited about it because number one, I am an enthusiast. And number two, before I ever had a 4090 on my channel, I had a bunch of people asking me in my community, hey, can you test the 4090? Can you test the 4090? And so I already know I have to get a 5090 because people want to see that data. Honestly, I have to get all of these cards because as my channel is starting to grow and grow, I want to be able to analyze every one of these cards and give you third-party independent benchmarks because we obviously can't trust the charts we just looked at, right? So clearly you need independent testing and that's why I'm gonna ask you to please subscribe if you're new to the channel, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and drop a comment letting me know what you think. Until next time, E-Rock out.